Hello again, this is Grant Abbott from Gabbett Media, and in this series we're looking at how to make a steel lion and put it into some real footage. In this particular episode, I'm looking at animation and animating the lion. So the first thing to do and the most important thing when you're doing animation is to look at some reference images. I looked at several shots of lions in the wild, in captivity and so forth. I even downloaded a few into Adobe Premiere just so I could break them down into frames. So here I've got a reference image of a lion walking. So a nice simple one there and a small section which I've put little markers so I can see exactly where my points are and there's a nice bit of them running as well. I also got a nice reference image here of a mountain cougar and here I've broken it down into segments so I can copy the cycle, the run cycle this is. And these sort of things are absolutely essential and really fantastic. If you search for whatever animal you're animating and type in animation reference or cycle into Google, you'll come up with lots. The other thing I'm looking at, and I'll just bring my pure ref across and maximize the screen. I've got some animation templates here, one here from Disney, I think, The Lion King, a few sort of drawings as well to help me out thinking about dynamic motion and things. This one's been quite important as well. This is from the Animator's Survival Kit. I do have this book, but you can see this idea of concave and convex with the movement and the bulk of these shapes. So not only looking at reference images from video, but look at what other artists have done. It's really helpful because often they simplify these main forms and it's very complicated to try and look just at real life footage. Especially for someone like me, I'm a bit of an amateur when it comes to animation. So I'll show you the different things that I've done. Here's the first bit, and the main thing here is getting the keyframes. So you can see him springing across like he's some sort of bunny rabbit. I'll show you that in real time. So it looks quite naff, but you can see the keyframe. So there's the starting keyframe, where he's curled in as it were. Then there's a keyframe there where he's in midair and then a keyframe there where he hits the floor. And you can see I'm just getting the idea of where he's going to move. I want him to jump slightly this way, that way, and across the screen here was my thinking. And this end bit looks pretty ridiculous. And you can see some slight deformation in my mesh there as well, which is even worse. This is still rendering an Eevee. And you can see I've actually put some foreground elements in now. So if I come back a bit, you can see these simple grass cutouts and I blurred them loads and put them in the front. So the second phase was just tidying up those keyframes and you can see a bit of a glitch in the foot there as well on the right hand side. And that's often the case when you're using IK, but it tends to get cleared up when you do your sort of tweening or in between frames. So I'm still deciding on exactly the position and I've done I think a couple of in-between frames here but not much just to get the idea. So now you can start to see I've put a few in-between frames and I've tidied up those keyframes a bit more. So this keyframe here you can see the feet come out to the side as he jumps over this rock uh, which previously it was just part of the ground plane but I've actually put in a rock later on so we'll be jumping over that. And you can see the animation's tidying up a bit. The paws go too high there though. And I haven't really finished at the end, but just putting in a few in-between frames to make sure it's working. And then I noticed that he goes down really low here. So that will need tidying up eventually. But you really got to sort these things out early on in your animation, because as soon as you start adding the detail, just like art, if you start adding the detail and then you need to go back to your basic shape, it's really difficult. It's even worse with animation because you have to move all those keyframes together into a different location and it's really tough. So still doing a bit more tidying up and this time I've put a rock in the foreground so he actually jumps over the rock but you can see I've slid an arm through it and that's not helpful. But it does look a bit better jumping over the rock like that. But still going too low here which I need to sort out as well. So in this one Again, still tidying up those keyframes, so the keyframe is there, and now I've started working on this second jump. The main thing I'm focusing on at the moment is the feet, getting those right. They're just about working at the moment, it's not working at the end here, I haven't done anything to tidy that up. 
and at this point I thought I'd animate the foreground just to see what that would look like. I'll quickly go into Blender and show you what's going on with that. So here's my foreground elements here in the frame, which you can't see very well, but if I go to rendered mode, there's one selected there and you can see it a bit more. If I come around to the side here, you can see I've got four foreground elements. And if I scrub along the timeline, you can see I've rigged them and they're waving around slightly. And that was quite easy. You just select your bone, obviously apply it to your mesh and make sure that you've actually got some detail in your topology. And then in the animation section, if I click on this bone here, you can quite easily key point the beginning point and end point and then select something like your X rotation or Y rotation and you can add a noise modifier. So I'm in the graph editor, so the graph editor just there and adding some noise. You can see now when I scrub across there's just a little bit of noise and they look like they're moving in the wind. There's not a lot of wind in this scene though, so it should just be very subtle and light. So that's just adding a key point to the beginning and end and then adding a noise modifier and if I zoom in a bit, you can see the noise in the curve there. I then copied and pasted that and changed the offset noise effect. And that just moves slightly differently for each one then. Whilst I'm here, I'll show you my rock that I built. So I just built that and projected the UVs onto that again. And you can see it in the background there. It's a little bit tricky to see, but you can just about see it. And he's jumping over it, although his left paw does go through it a little bit. Not so good. Still a bit of tidying up to do. So we're starting to get there and here's the sort of finished result for now anyway. So going through it in slow motion probably still goes a bit deep down there but I'm sort of living with that for now. And this was as much as I could manage to do in the couple of days I was spending on this. It was about two days to figure out how to integrate him into the scene and one day for the animation. And really, I'm going very slowly at the moment because again, I'm picking up new techniques, figuring out Blender 2.8 a bit as well and doing the odd video here and there. The main thing for me though is that this is a learning experience as I'm really not getting paid very much for this. <laughs> it still needs a lot of work really before I'd be happy with this. I thought I'd put it into cycles with a very low sample rate just to see what it would look like in cycles. And the line does integrate a lot better, to be honest, and the transparencies all look much nicer and clearer. So this log, for example, doesn't stick out in the same way, and this rock doesn't stick out the same way. The fog in the background, I need to animate the noise and things like that for the animation. But it does look a lot better in cycles, so I may have to go to cycles in the end. It even integrates into the ground a bit better. The shadows just seem to work a bit more. The ground seems to look more mossy and soft, probably due to the noise more than anything. But this took 45 seconds each frame, whereas this one took two seconds each frame, and that's full size. <laughs> so at this point, I thought it's a good idea to send this off to the client and see what they say, whether they're happy with the integration into the scene, whether they're happy with this level of animation, they might be. I still feel like it needs a lot of work, but it's a lot of time as well. I'm still having loads of fun, and that's why I'm still doing it, and I'm learning a lot along the way. It may be that they turn around and say, this is not what we're looking for. At that point, I'll probably just duck out and say I've had enough now. <laughs> Lots of people have said, what is a lion doing in a mossy forest like this? I would totally agree, but I suppose that's just the client. This is the actual picture that they sent me, so they chose this. If they turn around now and say, we want him in a different background, then again, I would probably duck out at that point. And I'd probably just work on this for a sort of portfolio piece, perhaps and maybe even adapt the lions who's got some fur and things like that as well. Thank you for all your support and comments. Do comment with any points of view that you have. I do read all the comments and I'm really grateful for them. They often give me good advice about which directions to go in and how to improve. So they're really helpful and supportive. In the next episodes, I'll be trying different locations and different scenes that I've been sent through and seeing if I can't do a better job with those. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.